Do you want to experience the thrill of a Packers game at Lambeau Field? If so, be sure to get your game tickets from the longtime trusted source in Wisconsin, Ticket King. Visit their locations in Milwaukee and Green Bay or just go to their website, theticketking.com. Again, that's theticketking.com. And now, for fans of the 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers, this is Cheesehead TV Live. Cheetahs don't stretch and neither do we. I think you're an idiot. And I mean that with the most respect possible that I can give to an idiot. The Packers Hall of Fame quarterback, Jay Cohen. Jay Cohen. Yeah. It's not as fun to say as equanimia. That is he a can... perfect example of a wrong opinion. Okay. Ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. Welcome back, Packers fans. Cheesehead TV Live once again. Everyone's all off a day now. Everyone's going to think yep. that tomorrow's going to be like that office, office episode where Dwight thought it was uh, fr- uh, Saturday, but really it was Friday. <laughs> nice job, Jim Halpert. <laughs> all right, Jason Perrone, Jeremy Vander Linden of Cheesehead TV. You can oui, follow, oui. And you can follow us on Twitter. Our handles are at the bottom of your screen right now, so That's check right. those out. You can also follow the show. We are going to be doing some more giveaways during the off season, so follow us because that's going to be prerequisite number one that you're following the show. Yep. All right, Jeremy. So the season's over. The Packers played their last game. We didn't do a show after that because life happened, and it was the New Year. That's Happy right. New Year. Happy Holiday New Year season. to all of you. Yep. Uh, speaking of that, giveaways. I have not sent out the last gift, last giveaway. Christmas season um, made that not happen. So that'll happen this week if you're out there waiting it's for your It's interesting that during stuff. the season of most giving of the year, you let that season I held on in to the it. way of giving. I made a bunch of toast with the toaster. I wore the hat around my house with no pants on, so you can have that image. Also, uh, that's more that brings more value to the hat, so when you get that, be excited. Uh, I will send that in the mail this week. You will get your prizes. Uh, I've been busy, so I, I'll fix it. I, I will fix it. Experience this no pants situation, and it's, uh, it's as bad as you think it might be. What's up? What's up, YouTube? We're like, yeah, What's remember, up? That, remember that ESPN promo with John Clayton? And it was like, he, he had the nice backdrop and he was wearing a suit. And then as soon as it ended, he had a ponytail. It was his bedroom. <laughs> it was a backdrop. And he had shorts on it underneath. And yeah. he was like doing a heavy metal. <laughs> All right. So as we know by now, today's Thursday. Yesterday, the Packers introduced their new head coach, Mr. Matt Lefleur. <laughs> Oh, my left you. <laughs> he was introduced to all of Packers Nation. And for those of you who watched it live, you got a special treat. We actually got to see Mark Murphy show a little personality when he uh, described the timeline that he gave Matt Lefleur yep. uh, for how uh, he was going to get back to him. So those of you know who watched it live know what I'm talking about. We're not going to get into it here on TV. But before we get into the Lefleur discussion, Jeremy, What's up? there is a... Division rival of ours who played a football game this past weekend and it didn't end so well. Things were looking good. Things were looking pretty good. It was it was kind of fun for Bears fans looking like they were going to be moving on. They were going to be going to play uh, probably the Rams. Yeah, they would have played the Rams had they won. And so... It comes down to, I mean, the Bears' defense was great all season. They were one of the top defense in the league. Mitch Trubisky improved. He played well. The offense did its thing. Tariq Cohn, as Mike Al Michaels likes to call him on Sunday Night Football, was doing great. They were playing well. All the guys that didn't come to the Packers, Cal Fuller, Allen Robinson, Khalil Mack, balled out. Except Mack didn't. The, he didn't really do much that game. But that isn't what the game came down to. The game came down to a Cody Parkey field goal. So for the folks, so for the folks... On the beautiful YouTube channel, and thank you so much for being here and following us. Let's revisit and relive that moment again, shall we? In Spanish. Pie de Cody Parkey. 43 yardas. El snap. Le mete el pie. Distancia, dirección. Le dio el poste. No, falló. Oh. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. Los hijos se van con la victoria. Ay, papá. No, señor. No, señor. Chicago, Chicago. No vamos para New Orleans. Philadelphia got el partido. Le dio el poste. Uh, so many, so many things. So many things. So many things. Um, 
Can wait, somebody, wait, wait, wait. Can anybody in the chat – wait, hold on. Can anybody in the chat tell me who speaks Spanish? I mean, seriously. Can <laughs> someone tell me, is it Fayo or Payo, and does that mean he missed? I speak – I mean, I'm kind of fluent in Spanish, but was it – what was the word Payo or Fayo? Well, whatever it was, um, he parky, missed, parky, and it was payo, awesome. Parky Payo, Parky Payo, and then yeah, yeah, when yeah. he sings Chicago for a couple of – That was pretty uh, great. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, you know why that happened? You know why? I bet the listeners know why. You probably know why, too. This is why. The Bears still suck. That's why. Because the Bears still suck, and they can't help themselves. There's Oscar. Just... Thank you, Oscar. It's Fayo. Okay, it's Fayo. It's Fayo. Fayo. Not Fayo. It's Fayo with an F-A. Well, you know, um, we tried. Thank you, everybody on the chat. <laughs> God, I love, I love, I love our people. Yeah. By the way, uh, be honest, y'all in the chat. Did you come here looking for transplants, or were you here for Oh, us? so many people are looking for Nagler. Um, Aaron Nagler's not here, obviously. I was called Fat Banky, so uh, that's, you know, so that's great. Um, George, by the way, um, your mom is fat, and she says hi. So, uh, yeah, we're, 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 you're Skinny Nagler, and I'm Fat Banky, and that's what's happening tonight. So welcome to Packers Transplants Live. All right. Uh, we love Aaron too. He's just not here. This isn't transplant. So they'll be doing their thing. But honestly, I got to let you go. Uh, seriously, for those of you who are here, typically transplants takes a break during the off season. They are, yep. they don't come back until like preseason or right before the season starts. They might so, pop up here and there, but you'll yeah. probably see us a little more this off season. Yeah. If you want um, if you, more, the best way to get more content is, uh, Nagler does Packers daily and a bunch yep. of stuff on the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow him on Twitter. You'll be able to keep up with his content there. So, all right. Jeremy, this coaching search obviously did not go the way anybody thought that it was going to because we had Josh McDaniels stuff down our throat, right? Yeah, everybody and you, said and you, this was happening. You kind of want you wanted McDaniels. I did, uh, I did, but in hindsight, I think this is the better hire. Uh, Matt Lafleur is not only a pretty Lafleur. boy visually, but uh, he doesn't have all the dirty laundry that comes along with with uh, McDaniels. So I, I I think it's a it's a good hire. Uh, obviously. Everybody should understand if you if you think they're going to suck next year because of this hire. Well, you're being a little foolish. It's kind of a wait and see. I I'm being cautiously optimistic. I think it was a good hire. I I like his pedigree. I like his background, and and I think I I would not have been excited is not the word. I don't know if I would have been as satisfied if it was Josh McDaniels as I am with this hire. Because after reading things, I'm I'm pleased with where things are at. Yeah. I am as well. It's taken a couple of days, obviously. We all had to recalibrate because we were all thinking McDaniels and he interviewed and that was the Packers apparently were the only interview that he had. They floated right. that he was interested in the Cleveland job, but I think that was just media speak by his agent to try to drive up his demand, maybe with the Packers, because he might have started talking numbers and then I don't know what derailed that whole thing. Yeah. You you said you like the background. You like Lefleur's background. Let's go through it here. Okay. You ready for this? Yep. He's 39 years old. He was born in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. So if you're a Michigander, your, your Packers head coach is uh, one of your people. He went to Mount Pleasant High School in Michigan, and he played his college football at Saginaw Valley State. Packers fans are very familiar with Saginaw Valley State because there's Why? a former Packers player that went to Saginaw Valley State who shall remain nameless. No, he won't. Jeff Janis. We're going gonna, gonna, gonna to say that. Jeff, Jeff Janis. Janis. Okay, so get this. I'm just – okay, so – uh, Lafleur was a coach at Saginaw Valley State from 2003, or in 2003, and then he kind of worked through the ranks to, through the ranks of college. Um, he was at Notre Dame in 2014. Yep. I happened to see his Notre Dame Fighting Irish take on my Arizona State Sun Devils in a football contest that season here in the uh, local Tempe area at Sun Devil Stadium. And not only did the Sun Devils win, but your Sun Devils free safety of the year to Marius Randall had yeah pick six in that game mm. I didn't know he would be a future Packer at that point uh, I, was, I Randall. almost passed out don't bring up the, that get back to the good stuff spot. let's get back to no more all de- right fine. No, this that is guy. what we do come on all it's right. been a while just lay off okay so <laughs> then he was with the Falcons uh Rams as a uh, offensive coordinator and then Tennessee Titans offensive coordinator in 2018 and now he's a head coach as a player Jeremy yep Matt LaFleur played some semi-pro ball he was with the Omaha Beef in 2003. Oh, oh the, the Beef. The Omaha Beef. All right. Look it up. Also, how much more do you respect this guy now? He was with the Omaha Beef in 2003. <laughs> and in 2004, he was with the Billings Outlaws. That's got to be Montana. Yeah. Dude, yeah, you I play so. semi-pro ball in Montana. 
Uh, I ain't trying to fight you in an alley. Well, you love the game because there's nothing else in Montana. Sorry if you live in Montana. I apologize, but there's like no reason to be out there. I just want to know who got to be the one to update Wikipedia. Who got to be the one that like put the is the head coach, the head football coach for the Green Bay Packers of the, of the National Football League? What a time. What yeah. a time to be alive. I I really liked um, the press conference. A lot of people were, were talking about how he was nervous. Yeah. I mean, come on. The thing is, is that we're all, as Packers fans, most of us are pretty familiar with the scene when guys do press conferences. Like, we've seen McCarthy up there. We've right. seen Murphy. And he's done it for years. The backdrop, the whole scene, the whole setting. We know the names. We know yep. who the media guys are. Jason Wildey, Rob Domofsky, Wes Hodkowicz, like Ryan Wood, all those guys. We know who they are. We probably know where they sit in right. the media room, right? So to us to see somebody walk into that room, it's like, oh, here's somebody walking into the room, the press conference room again. They're going to give a press conference. Matt LaFleur is walking into this room for the first time ever. He's taking, his, he's taking on a, a head coaching role in the NFL, which is – if you're not nervous and a little scared to move up in your career or take that next step in a job, right. it's not the right job. And for it's you. not so, just nerves. It's an emotional moment too. The guy very, is taking a huge step in his career. Very. I mean, it's he, the thing that anybody who really is serious about coaching and, and, and they want to do it on a professional level, you dream about doing it in the pros. Okay. And, and that guy took that step. And so I wouldn't say it was all nerves. I think emotion played a huge part. There was, I mean, there was a lot, a, a, probably a lot going through him at that time. Uh, I was fine with the press conference. The only thing was Mark Murphy was terrible. It was and, uh, well. It he's was, tough to look at, man. Where the hell are those eyebrows? You know where they are? They moved over to Matt Matt Lafleur's face. He's got these like big, thick eyebrows, and then there's there's Dingus sitting there with no. I he was his opening portion of that of that segment of that press conference was long, boring. It was the longest of all three. Yeah. And that Goody gets up there and says three words. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Goody. I appreciate that, though. I, re I really do. That's his So for though. those in the chat, we are going to get into uh, Matt LaFleur a little bit as far as what he's going to bring to the table. But as far as the inter introductory, introductory stuff for Matt LaFleur, I thought it was fine. Whatever. And people are reading into it so much. Oh, it's good that he's nervous. What the hell? How, how is that good or bad? Or well, I just whatever. said it's good that he's Here's nervous. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter one way or another if it's good or bad. He was just nervous because he's a human, right? So the thing is, like, I don't think his nervousness in the op open uh, press conference is going to have any effect on the rest of his career. It's good that he's nervous. Who, who cares if he's nervous? He's nervous. Not everybody is ready to sit in front of a, a, a room full of press and answer questions. It's not, that's not normal for him as a coordinator. He didn't have to do it a lot. Yeah, no, it, it, there was a lot of emotion. He was thanking his family. It was genuine. That's what I like the most about LaFleur is he came across as very genuine. Yeah. I don't think he thinks he has all the answers, but he's right. going to try. No, and no. the Packers did the thing. They did the trendy thing. They brought in the hot young assistant to try to relate to Aaron Rodgers. And let's not pretend that that wasn't part of the equation because it was. <laughs> Caden, Aaron says, Rodgers, Caden points out that Mark Murphy said a bad word. He, he did. did. He did. He said quite a bad <laughs> word. It was a two syllable word. And it's one that um, that you would say when you're referring to the fecal matter that comes out of a male cow. Yeah. The end. Yeah, that's great. So, um, I liked, I, I, I just, the moment was, was big for him yep. and, and that's all that there was to it. But this and I guy, love it. I love, I, I love it. I think, I think the hire is great. I, I mean, I, I think it, it's a good start. I mean, when Mike McCarthy got the job, what did you think? When Mike McCarthy first got hired, what did you think? Well, so, and I, I don't want to get all, you know, Nobody I thought much. I, well, I, I guess the point I want to, I'm trying to make here is that that was that was a long time ago in all of our lives. We were all in a different right. place. We but were I, all, I, different all I'm saying level. is the point I'm making is nobody knew much about Mike McCarthy. Well, yeah. he was coming off a terrible season. OK, they, that offense that he was running wasn't very good. And he got the job with the Packers. And, and, and there were probably probably a lot of Packer fans who were mad. I think there were a lot of Packer fans who didn't know anything. They were just like, well, we'll just wait and see. And we're kind of in that same spot. That, but the thing that I like about LaFleur is his mindset and the way that he does things. One of the things that I liked most that I saw when people were talking about LaFleur was the fact that he adjusts to the personnel that he has, which after 13 years of Mike McCarthy, oh. it's going to be a breath of fresh air to have a coach who will adjust to what he's got on the field. No longer you, you will know? it be so-and-so's turn to run the ball for an entire quarter, regardless of the scenario right. or the score. He's going to use what is going to work. He's going to, and if it's working, he's going to stick with it. These are the things that he focuses on 
in his offense is the running game. He's going to use the running backs and screen game. They're, they're going to run a lot of screens. People, the screen is back in Green Bay. Yeah. Now, we've been fooled before, and we've thought that things were going to change, and they didn't, and there were certain things that, you know, and this is a new head coach, so you've got to give the benefit of the doubt. You have to come into this with a clean slate, and there's a lot of fans that don't want to do that. They've already made their decision. They're like, I hate the hire. I love the hire. Why did they hire him? It doesn't make any sense. Why right. did they talk to McDaniels? How did they make this decision? Everybody thinks he was hired because he falls most into line and he checked boxes. Other and than Aaron Rodgers chose him because he yeah. can walk all over him. These are all dumb things to think. They're stupid. Care? It's stupid. That's real, dumb. Real quick, real quick. Okay, so with regards to, because some of you are still a little bummed that Mike McCarthy's gone. There's some Mike McCarthy lovers out there. And I'll just say, like, I, I tweeted out earlier today that – I think people were like, why isn't McCarthy getting a job? And there's all this debate about, well, he wasn't that great of a coach. Nobody hired him, which isn't necessarily true. Right. I mean, nobody did hire him because he didn't take the job. Right. But I tweeted out and said that there was a couple things going on. And first of all, he was offered the Arizona job. He was offered full control. He said no. Yeah. Okay. He didn't want it. All right. So he didn't. So. Well, he didn't want all that control. Well, some people said every team passed on him. He's not a good coach. That's false. He was offered a job. Uh, I think I think most teams passed on him reportedly. Yeah, but he was offered a job, right? right? So it wasn't a total pass. He was offered a job, but I would argue that the Cardinals would probably have been more interested in Kingsbury if he was available at the beginning of the coaching search. But he wasn't until like a couple days ago. I mean, that that all was like new information like a week ago that he then he was starting to interview for jobs. Nobody saw that coming. Okay, so let me just get through this here. So to say every team passed on him is false. Did he want to interview for other jobs? We don't know. Okay. And then my last point was those who said Mike McCarthy gets hired the second he gets let go, I guess we're also wrong because he was let go in early December and teams weren't in a place to hire I was wrong. him. Yes. They weren't in a place to hire him, but the even the Cardinals, I don't think that was a really quick that was a really quick thing. Dan Lukes, who I'm sure is watching the show right now. And if you are, <laughs> thank you for being a, a listener. But um, I'm here to put you on blast, Dan, because he just responded back and said, well, your, your, your third comment and your first comment contradict. Kind of true. They do, but it doesn't make them wrong. You know, and... and uh, Explain. And My brain's going to explode. And then he says, to say those who said he would be hired right away are wrong simply is simply inaccurate if that person turns down two jobs. What was the second job? There was, there was no, no sec- second there job. There was no second job. There was no second job. So, okay. And I, I think, I think we, were, we were wrong. He didn't get hired in a second, it was especially... Uh, by the Browns, and that's what everybody thought was going to happen. I thought it would be the Cleveland Browns. That didn't happen. They, the, it, it seems like that didn't really even get that far. Okay, they ended up going with Freddie Kitchens over Mike McCarthy. McCarthy's still a choice, and they hired Freddie Kitchens. Well, that's the other thing. We don't know what we don't know what the background of of all of it was. So right. you know, just but Mike, I would say Mike McCarthy is a uh, uh, at least up front is the better hire than Freddie Kitchens, and he could prove us wrong, but or prove me wrong. But the thing is. They chose Freddie Kitchens over a Super Bowl winning coach. That, and, but, and, but we and don't they, know why. But we don't know why. We don't know why McDaniels didn't get offered the job in Green Bay. We don't know if Matt LaFleur literally knocked the socks off of we, Murphy and Goot and they did not offer McDaniels the job. I think we job, do know why. They said McDaniels, they, they got cold feet and said, this guy's going to screw us. I think, I think LaFleur just blew them away and that was it. That's it. He blew them away. And, no, hired, and, actually, the right and actually, the Packers said nobody else in the first nine interviews blew us away. That includes Josh McDaniels. He did not blow them away. It was Matt LaFleur. You know, that that leads me to believe, and, I, and, and this also could be Murphy pumping up LaFleur, and obviously the guy that's, that you just chose, you have to make the fans believe in it, and you want that guy to perform well, and you're going to pump him up and say right. all the right things. My boss does the same thing for me at work. It's very painful for him because he has to pull things out of his uh, – rear side to make me feel good. I'm kidding. I'm actually really good at what I do. Uh, so podcast podcast. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I we're we're talking about some of the non football stuff here, but that's what people are talking about. And they, and they still want to, they still want to know more about the process. They still want to know more about why this, why that, um, you've got to give it time to play out. We're not anywhere near in a, in a window of opportunity where we can judge this higher. And even a year from now, unless the Packers go one and 15 and they look awful doing it and the locker room implodes, we're still not going to be in a, in a great place to yeah. to do so. Now, remember when McCarthy came on board, I never answered your question fully. I didn't know who he was. I was a fan at that point. I wasn't doing this. So I didn't have the same um, analytical take on it. Right. But 
But I'm sure your thoughts were, I don't know who that guy is. I wanted Parcells. I want whoever the hot cow, whoever the hot name was at that time. That's who you wanted. I was that guy. Right. And I am annoyed by that that, guy now. No, that's that's fair. That's a fair way to think because some people just don't, they don't. uh, They want what's familiar. People who aren't super dedicated to this don't necessarily want to read through all the other names and they don't want to think about, you know, the reason that I wanted a podcast now instead of before they hired a coach is I wanted to read about one guy instead of 10 guys. And, and that was pure laziness on my part. But but fans who aren't super deep into this thing, they're not that interested to read that stuff. And so when they when you're saying, who do you want as a coach? They're throwing out Bill Cower because everybody knows Bill Cower. Everybody knows that name. And um, and especially and, if that coach was in or won a Super Bowl, like yeah. you might just forget it. Everyone, that's all it takes. You can literally just take guy from point A, right? Put him in point B, and he will be equally as successful, which we know is obviously not true. Yeah, that's not always the that's not always the truth. But I I remember when McCarthy took over, he took over a four and twelve Packers team with Brett Favre. Yeah, they underachieved. They were horrible. They didn't play well. And they did improve in 06, but they only went 8-8, eight and eight and they had to win their last game to do it. Yep. They didn't make the playoffs, but everybody was excited about the future. Mm-hmm. And you know what excited – just a, a reminder of how things could go. One of the cool things was the two seasons prior to that, Brett Favre didn't announce he was coming back until months after the season ended. It right. was like within a week after 06 was over, he's like, I'm, I'm back coming, in 07. I'm back. And they came out in 07, and they won their first right. four games. They won their first, like, I think, five of their first six games. And they went on to that season. They went to the NFC Championship game right. in McCarthy's second season. Well, the other thing you can't forget here is they have personnel issues, too. This isn't just LeFleur. I think this is a, have I think this is a two-year rebuild. I don't think – I mean, they might make the playoffs next year. You're talking year, about the talent level I, right yeah, now. Yeah, I okay. don't think that this team is going to be at its peak next year. I think it's going to be a two-year process. I hope not. And so I I think LeFleur might, you know, things might be okay this year, but you got to give him a little pass on the first year. But by the second year, I things need to start progressing in a very positive way yes, that's for fair. me to be satisfied. So but, in 20. So, so in 20, we need to see fireworks. Right, exactly. So Packers fans, be patient. There's a lot of time before we can say this is good or bad. Well, and I'm let, happy with the hire, but we don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, and I'll qualify me saying I hope not. When I say I hope not, obviously I'd love for the Packers to be undefeated next year and win it all. If they do, that's great. I'm just saying that in order for them to peak, if they peak next year, there's only one direction to go. I think this is definitely a multi-year build your the way the NFL works right now is you're always constantly building your roster I don't know if rebuild is ever really truly a thing just because right. of the constant movement and revolving door and when you have is, some of the parts the Packers have it's not a total rebuild and it's I mean, it, well and you have to you have to be realistic about what what is the talent level at each position some people think tight end is garbage because they think Jimmy Graham is garbage he's not garbage he just wasn't as good as he was paid for well there right? are, so that's there, but there are, there, there that's, are factors to that that's like just, the way that Mike McCarthy used mm-hmm. him last year wasn't necessarily fair to Jimmy Graham. And so I don't think we know. Well, we don't know what Jimmy Graham could have been this year because they, they had him play a lot of inline tight end. They had him block a lot. And that's not Jimmy Graham. And we all knew that. We're drilling down on Jimmy Graham a lot right now, which isn't the point of this conversation. The point is that t- to validate what you're saying, though, you have, you are correct. Yeah. The usage is different. And I think LaFleur is going gonna, is gonna to use these players differently and get more out of them. I have to believe and I'm really excited. You know, one of the things that the the Packers offense was really good at when Favre was quarterback, especially when they had a Mon Green, was the screen game. I have never seen a prettier a prettier screen game than when Brett Favre was quarterback. That's one thing that I will I will give Brett Favre the nod on over Aaron Rodgers every day of the week and twice on any other day you pick. I'm because never. he was so good at the screen game, and they had like Holmgren had it down, and even Sherman like. They had it down. They did yeah. well. It's no, coming you're, back. You're right. I'm telling you, it's coming back. And I think I think the one that's going to benefit the most from it, Aaron Jones, if he stays healthy, is going to be dynamic and he's going to be a good runner next year. When you're a good runner, you're a good runner. You're going to make plays. Jamal Williams. Watch Jamal Williams yeah. become a legit because he, Because he is good at catching out of the backfield. It's one of the things that I did not. Really well. The last two weeks of the season, I didn't yep. hate what I saw from, from Williams. I thought right. he was one of the most efforted players on the field. And that was, you know, that last week was awful. Right. But I really liked what I saw from Williams. He played, especially in the, the Jets game. So I, it, there were two people in the chat, and, and, and I don't remember who you are, so sorry if I don't mention your name, but they were talking about that McCarthy record that I mentioned. He was thir- His offense was 32nd in the league when he left the 49ers for Green Bay. 32nd. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. And then another person said, yeah, but he had success with the Saints. Well, yeah, but Lafleur had success with the Rams. I mean, 
it's it that is like the same story. Matt LaFleur last year struggled with a team that had a lot of injuries, but when he was with the Rams, things were going quite well. I I, I think yeah. I think if you're gonna compare uh the end of Mike McCarthy's time with the 49ers and the Saints and all that moving into the Packers, uh, and l- you could lay Matt LaFleur's stuff right over the top and it looks pretty close to the same. And maybe he didn't coach as long and McCarthy was older when he got hired, but uh I I think the the I'm very encouraged by the background of Matt LaFleur and and the things that he did before he got to Tennessee. Before he got to Tennessee. Well, they asked they asked and I have a question. They asked Murphy straight up, how much stock or did did you watch what he did in Tennessee last year? How much did that weigh into your decision making? And there were some Mariota I feel like is never healthy all, right. for a full season. He missed a, a there lot. There was a of lot time. of factors. It's not about what he did in Tennessee are, are all of the Tennessee Titans rot players coming to become Packers. Yeah. You've got to, but you have to endear yourself to the locker room you're going to, and you have to give your vision for what you want to do with that team. It might not work, but I want to know that the vision that this coach has and what he wants right. to try to do is what we want to accomplish as an organization. Um, Ron Zook's in the chat. Just oh, so good. you know, good. Um, we haven't even gotten to that, and we're not. I'm not there yet. You're not ready. I have a okay. Question. Well, you, you, we'll talk about you, Zach. You brought up a good point, and I want to ask your uh, your thoughts on this. And I also this goes to the folks in the chat as well. A lot of talk about McVay and the McVay tree. Yeah, we've seen a lot of the, this so and so team. NFL teams are looking for the next Sean McVay. Okay. Right. And this was every year there's a hot name, and you're looking for the next so and so. Kyle Shanahan was kind of that guy right. the year prior, right? Right. So. Are you, am I missing something? I I like Sean McVay and I think he's a good coach, but you know, he's being used as the gold standard. And I think to some extent, it's not that people want LaFleur to be McVay. They want him to have the type of impact that McVay had in, in uh, Los right. Angeles and got, I mean, look, cause look, the, we're, look where the Rams were and look where they are now. Are you, are you, are you buying or selling that? The, the Sean McVay type is what every team should be looking for and that we hope LaFleur turns into that. Uh, to answer your question, I'll read this question in the chat. Is it too soon or it's too soon to talk, uh, to, to call it the McVay tree? No. Yes. I think it is too soon. It would be the Shanahan tree and really you got to start under Kubiak. So uh, to, to everybody wants to attach it to McVay because of the success that he's had, but it goes deeper and farther beyond that with successful coaches that, uh, did a lot of winning in the league and won Super Bowls and 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 have been successful. You know, everybody wants to to, to stick it on you know the McVay tree, but McVay's not a tree right now. It's a bush. Okay, it just started. Like everybody, just just relax on Sean McVay. And also, your expectations of Matt Lafleur being Sean McVay, I think, are unfair. He's going to be his own coach. We don't know what it'll look like yet. Be excited, but at the same time, like I just think attaching his name to Sean McVay. It's just like the the way that people are doing it is so irresponsible because we don't we we don't know how close things are going to be to what McVeigh does, and um, you know maybe Mike Shanahan has way more influence than McVeigh in what he currently does. You know, like we don't know, and that'd be fine with me. I that's fine, you know, uh, but we really we really just need to see it play out. And I would say it's too soon to talk about a McVeigh tree. There have just been, I mean, all these names, all these young guys are getting a lot of, a lot of love. Like Zach Taylor right now is the Bengals are hiring him to be their head coach, right? Quarterbacks coach for the Rams. I'm, I'm so baffled that teams can hire a guy who's still coaching for his team in the playoffs. Like right. that's allowed. I know they have limitations on when they can talk they to can't him. But if I'm a team, it though, right? If I'm in a team and they are, it's all over Twitter. Oh, and if I'm a team that's in the playoffs and my coach is being interviewed and, and I get, there's nothing they can do to block it. Yeah. But I'm not happy about that. Right. That's, that's just a distraction. You've got Mike McDaniel. For those of you who are upset that Josh McDaniels did not become the head coach of the green Bay Packers. Don't give up all hope. There is a chance that LaFleur might be talking to Mike McDaniel, no S, who is the run game coordinator for the 49ers. That's close enough, right? Another hot name, another hot uh, assistant coach. And, you know, he was with the Falcons. So I would assume that's the, um, you would call that the Dan Quinn tree. No, it's the Shanahan. (laughs) It's the Shanahan um, tree. Yeah, I guess. And, um, I, I guess that's what it would be because he was also with the Browns. He spent some time with Washington in 13. He kind of bounced from team to team. Yeah. So the hot, hot name. And there's a, there's an op- 
a possibility that LaFleur is looking at him as offensive coordinator, although I don't know if he would stay right. or not. He's going to have, these guys are going to have other opportunities. Uh, there was some talk about Joe Philbin possibly being kept. I don't know if it would be as offensive coordinator. I don't think that has officially been ruled. I don't out. want that. I would fi- well, I would find that really hard to believe. I don't want that. I do want to mention just real quick. Jeff said, if I say there's no reason to be in Montana, I've never probably never been there. That's fair. I've never been to Montana. Maybe you're right. Uh, anyways, back to that. Um, I think I, I don't think keeping Joe Philbin is a smart move because that side of the ball needs a total reset. It needs new faces. It needs a total overhaul. It doesn't need any retreads and especially ones that have been there. Why would you want to keep when the issue was the offense and it didn't operate well and nobody was in sync and nobody cared or wanted to even run the plays that were called, which we haven't talked about. We can yeah. skip it because I, I don't, you know. It's so old news by now right. with the coaching. Why would you want to keep that around? Right. I, I don't, Joe I Philbin don't know. is not going to all of a sudden like pull a rabbit out of his hat and be, and Philbin knows he's gone. He's already interviewing for positions. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. got, he's actually uh, interviewing with the Vikes. The Vikings are, are interviewing him for offensive line. And then I think James Campen is also going to get an interview with the Vikings um, for their uh, offensive line coach position as well. So I think those right. guys know that they're they're out. They're not coming back. Official announcements have not been made, but you can assume that on the offensive side. Right. Of Somebody the ball, asked that if the Petten if the Petten thing's been made official, uh, and I don't I don't think no, it has. No. I think I think we've only seen it from like you know Schefter or Rappaport or whatever. Yeah, not official, but it will be. Yeah, and I think that was a condition. S. M. Buck of, says the 49ers are blocking interviews for McDaniel. Can you block an interview for a guy? No. If right. You're a run so game if it's not a lateral move, no. they can't block it. Yeah, if it's for offensive coordinator, he's a run game coordinator right now. You can't block that. That's not just for head coach. It is literally any upward movement. You can't block. It. I now I actually have to admit I don't know. Okay. But I thought I mean if you're moving I, upward, I, I think you're right. But I, but I think I'm, according, I'm not entirely according sure. According to the antitrust laws of the United States of America <laughs> and the Constitution of the United States set forth by us in 1776. Uh, I don't. I would find it hard to believe that an organization can block somebody from pursuing uh, a step up in any way. But maybe right. in the NFL it's different because it's a well union. contracts. Yeah, the unions, contract contracts. Parties, yeah, unions contracts. I sound like uh, the uh, Andrew Brandt podcast. You now. you, you the can't business block. Of sports. You can't block for a head coach position. That's great, li- great listen. So the by rest the way. of it you can you can block. Great listen, Andrew Brandt, the business of sports, really good. Uh, okay, so, so SM Buck says you can't. Okay, you, so, you, or you can block. Uh, you can block anybody from moving into a coordinator position, but a head coach, you can't block that. So if that's true, then then, then that might not even be a possibility that McDaniel will, will end up here. Um, but, you know, we'll see. that LaFleur's attached to a lot of young coaches and a lot of uh, hot names right now. It's, it's not just McDaniel. He's going to have other friends uh, within that McVay tree that he's probably going to call. So one of which one of which is um, Nathaniel Hackett, who was let go by the Jacksonville Jaguars midseason. He's uh, also on the radar for okay. LeFleur. A lot of people not happy about that. They're like, oh, we got fired. But there's obviously circumstances behind it. Um, I do have to say before you address that, we made it 32 minutes before somebody made any kind of a dodgeball reference in the chat, which is great. Good job. every. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I, don't, I don't know you why know it took that long. Here's the thing. People are talking about how those memes are going to get old. I disagree. No, they're not. I disagree. They are only, they are only, and the gifts, they are only going to get better. Only <laughs> going to get the, the knowledge of people in the state of Wisconsin of the movie Dodgeball is going to, <laughs> going to be superseded by zero other states, countries, provinces, or continents therein. Yeah. No way. There's and absolutely awesome. no way. So we got to talk about, some other news that happened today. We'll call it good news, but some would probably take offense to that because no, it's good news. Ron Zook has been relieved of his duties as special teams coordinator of the green Bay Packers. He will not be back next season. The floor is yours. Yes. That's all I got. I'm, I mean, like, how could you keep him? How could you keep him? That's not even when they, when, when LaFleur took the job, and Nagler did, was doing his his questions or whatever, and he said he would judge this hire based on whether or not Ron Zook had a job, uh, like a week from whenever he did the video, right? Um, uh, that was never going to happen. They were ne- they were never going to keep Ron Zook. You couldn't, you could not keep that guy around. I'm surprised the Packers didn't fire him sooner. Like, why even leave him on the menu? If Philbin, not wa- an option. If, if Philbin wanted one more thing on his resume, knowing that he was going somewhere else, he's like, hey, I got rid of. Uh, I got rid of Winston Moss. 
and I got rid of Ron Zook, <laughs> and then I left. That would they, have been the move. Right. They should, they should have been done with Zook probably at the same time as Winston Moss. They should have just moved on. Uh, yes, Zook is not coming back. You can all breathe a sigh of relief or whatever. It's, it, it, it's a positive. This is a good thing. No, no more Ron Zook. I'm sorry to Ron Zook in the chat. You're finding out this news from us right now. Um, no, uh, no job for you next year. I, so I, we didn't pack your ch- things. We didn't get a chance to say this because we didn't do a show after the Lions game. But I will. I'll say this, in all seriousness, that fake field goal touchdown by Prater, that is. It doesn't get much more disrespectful from mm. another team saying you can't stop what we're gonna do, and then when you pull it off like that. You're done. Like, why Why are you even on the sideline? You're marched off the sideline like, get out of here. Right. Like, when I get back. Not even all. You're brought up to the top of the stadium and thrown over the side. Okay, <laughs> get the hell out of here. I mean, they give you a parachute, but, you know, they make you crap your pants a little on the way out. So, R- Ron Zook, it, it's a good thing he's gone. Hey, Ron Zook is an adventurist. Have you seen those pictures of him water skiing? You seen those oh, so triceps? He would, so, he wouldn't crap his pants. He'd enjoy it. Okay, then no parachute for him. Ron Zook is no longer the special teams coordinator. The Packers will find somebody new to take it to uh, handle that area. And I, I think it's special teams is culture. It's attitude. Cause I've seen some yeah. really good ones in the Packers history. They were really good. Now this was when you could do the wedge, but in 96, they were really good. They had Desmond Howard. They definitely got the most out of him. They won the Super Bowl because of him. He scored the icy touchdown or the touchdown that iced that game. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, they've got to get back to doing those things well, and they've got to get back to executing. I like what LaFleur said in his presser yesterday, penalty free aggression on special teams. As soon as he said that you knew Zook was done. Yep. Bye. 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 Because the penalties were so out of control. So out of control. There was no fixing that. There's no turning that bus around that thing. You can't turn it around because it rammed into a light pole and it is broken. Is that, that special teams unit, there was no way they were fixing that hot, steamy pile of garbage. No. They weren't going to fix it. And so you, so you had to move on. It's the right move by, by LaFleur. Congratulations. Good first move in office. We, uh, we Packers fans everywhere appreciate your choice. Well, it's for I'll, the best. I'll go for even a step further, and I'll say that, like, let's not act like the officials around the league don't have certain preconceived notions about certain teams, and they're not watching closely. They're like, yeah. oh, Green Bay's – you know, they've got to be holding their special right. teams. They suck. block in the back all the time. You and know, they're they... getting flagged. Maybe now they'll get, they'll get a little bit more respect. Kind of a I reset, mean, a reset on get, that. I have not, I have not seen if anybody wants to chime in with their, their vote. And I mean like really legitimately vote on this. Cause I got 35 years worth of history to dig back through. And I watched some eighties Packers football too. <laughs> remember? So my, my uh, calibration is a little different. The most disrespectful thing I've seen happen to the Packers on a football field was the Matt Prater touchdown. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe it's not. And the but, Packers, but it, the Packers but let it happen. It felt so terrible to watch that garbage. I mean, you're, things are already bad, okay? Things are already terrible. And then you got to take a dump on the Packers on top of it. I mean, just like. Outside says the Montgomery fumble. Now, that I mean disrespectful by an opponent. Yeah, that, that was, was disrespectful by Ty Montgomery. What an idiot. What a terrible choice. Yeah, his season ended, too. Your Ravens got knocked out of the playoffs. See you later, buddy. Quarterback played like crap. He wasn't playing anyways. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, somebody says, will LaFleur please bring Derrick Henry with you? Let's get. Let's not get crazy here. Right. These guys have to, first of all, they have to be free agents. If yep. they're not, we have to trade for them. Right. If you're going to trade for Derrick Henry, you're going to have to give up a lot of capital. And we have a guy, and his name is Aaron Jones, and we don't need to be you giving don't up need premium him. assets for Derrick Henry. And you, you kind of have a power guy, too. I mean, you don't need Derrick Henry to be that guy. You know, Jamal Williams can – I mean, he's not Derrick Henry, but he can play in that role. That's fine. Nathaniel must follow me on Twitter because he's like, what are your thoughts about LaFleur not bringing back David Rye, the the wide receivers coach? Yeah. The uh, the the visor? Uh, basically, that's the same thing as asking the bouncer, why did you not let the underage kid in the club? Like, <laughs> he don't belong there. It's illegal for him to be there. Right. Like – that clown, we talked about this on the show where he couldn't recount the play and he didn't know. And like Rogers does not, didn't respect him at all. Roberts, Rogers, Roberts, Roberts, <laughs> Rogers basically told him reportedly that he was a sham. He did not like, didn't, did not think that guy brought any value to the wide receivers room. And I think that was one of the reasons why the receipt, the rookies might've 
might have taken a little longer a to little develop. A, yeah. He was kind of a spaz. That guy in his needed, first interviews, that guy was a little weird, man. That guy needed to go. Um, all right. Peter says uh, the 2014 championship game. Again, the special that teams was self inflicted. I'm talking about no, no, something no. that the, the special teams touchdown, not the, not no, the onside kick. No, this one's kick. worse. No, no, this one's worse. That was just like, hey, let's make a play. AJ Hawk with his, you know, 6 2 40 time right. made it possible. This was a kicker throwing a touchdown, un- basically uncontested. In your own stadium, like how did you how do how do you not see that receiver out wide? How do you not notice the? Re- and if you're on that the sidelines, that is how that's what I'm the, saying. You're a coach on the sidelines. Why the hell aren't you calling a timeout? Watch. It's almost like, hey, dude, hey, bro, watch this. These guys are so dumb. They won't even they won't even guard this play. And sure as shit, I said it. They didn't. Right. They didn't. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, bad moment. Bad bad moment for the Packers. You want to know how upset I am? Fans. I just said it. Yeah. Um. And it and we're what two weeks removed? So. Uh, Ooh, Randy Moss mooning the fans. Very close. That's up there. That's a good top. Now five. that's pure disrespect. That's a top. Like fiver. that's not even football. That's not even a football play. There you that's go. That's just pure straight on disrespect by a total douchebag. Another. Uh. uh yeah. I just. Yeah. That. That's. All yeah. Right. All right. So. Um. The coaching staff is going to round out. There's going to be more hires that are going to take place. So there's going to be more more information and more that's going to be coming out. Now that we're into the offseason, we haven't had a chance that we, we officially, you know, the season's over with now. You got a question in the chat here. Will the Packers bring back Clay Matthews? I'll uh, throw in Randall Cobb as well. What's your take? A, will they? B, do you want them to? I don't know. I don't think they bring back Cobb because they don't, they're not in the same position I, and, and I don't mean wide receiver and outside linebacker, obviously, but like the Packers aren't in the same uh, place with those two positions with the wide receiver group. They've already drafted three guys last year. They've already been developing a group that's, that's ready to step in next year and they can add to that group. Okay. With the outside linebackers, they got nothing. They have Kyler Fackrell. They don't have anybody waiting, waiting in the wings. Reggie Gilbert's not going to save the day. No, but you got two first round picks. That's fine, but it's not the, those first two first round picks right now at this moment equivalent to nothing for the outside linebacker position. We don't know what's going to be available when it comes time to pick. And so uh, I would say Clay's got to come back because you don't have anything else. Even if Clay comes back and you and you draft a couple guys and you don't need him at outside linebacker, you can move him inside because he's still good at that. He can do that. He was. He does not have. No, I think he, does he can. Not I have think he's speed. fine. I think he would be fine. He can't play three downs. But when he's back there, he does read and react to plays much faster than when he's right up on the line. He does, and, yeah. And so he does not. The, he's not a Clay Matthews, down. I think, could survive an inside linebacker on his instincts alone versus doing what he's been doing. That that has not been successful. But I just don't think there's any space right now uh, or, or there's any uh, place right now where the Packers should feel comfortable getting rid of Clay. Like, there's no, there's nothing behind him. What the hell are you going to do if you get rid of him? And then you try to fill that position this offseason, and it flops. Somebody asked to, yeah, I, I, I would be okay with bringing him back, but he can't be your primary guy. No, you got You have to find the replacement. You have even if even if Clay starts the season as your best pass rusher, you sure as hell better have somebody on the roster who's going to pass him at some point. Maybe not this year. Maybe it takes till year two. But somebody on the roster who's going to show up and be the guy to replace Clay Matthews. That that's what needs to be on the roster. Right. Someone asked about Balaga. Just a reminder, Balaga is actually under contract for 19. He's not a free agent. But right if they now. cut him, only, they can make cap space. Well, and that's what people are so talking he's about. only 1.6 million dead cap, but he only counts 8.2. It's the same as last year. He only counts 8.2 against the cap this season. I would say you're keeping Balaga as insurance. Even if right. he's not going to play, that's, that's not a ton of money. Right. That's still worth keeping him on the roster. Even if he's not your starter, wouldn't you love to have Brian Bulaga there? If your starter like did get hurt and you're like, Hey, that guy is going to come in for it. Like I, it's better than Spriggs. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think you keep Bulaga around because he's still young and yes, he's dealing with his injury issues, but the guy's pretty consistent when he plays. And so it would really suck to, to get rid of that guy and then have him go have a healthy season somewhere else. Like imagine he's from Chicago or he's from Illinois Imagine if he goes plays for plays for the Bears for for the next season, uh, next few seasons, and he stays healthy and he plays at the level we know he can play at. 
that would suck. I mean, you don't you don't want to make your choice based on that. But I'm just saying, Brian Bulaga brings a lot of value to the team when he's healthy. He's just not healthy a lot, and that sucks. Um, so, I think I think they they should keep Bulaga. Yeah, I agree. I'm on the I'm Nick on says the- we have Sacral. We're good. Um, I like Kyler Fackrell, Sacral, whatever. I like him fine. He was great. for a couple of games. He's not. A, he he's not. He's not your number. If he's your number one pass rusher, you are in a heap of trouble. That is bad. If Kyler Fackrell is your number one guy, if he's your number two guy, you're bad. Okay, right. that's bad. Kyler Fackrell should be a guy rotating into the defense. I don't, I don't want to see him being one one or two at that position. I don't want that. Right. Because he's not consistent enough. You know, he had he had moments this season where uh, he had a bunch of sacks and clumps, and then he'd disappear. And, and it was great to see some success, and maybe he'll build on that next year. I can't see them going into next season thinking like Kyler Fackrell's the, the, the starter here at outside linebacker. Like nobody can be serious about that as an option. Right. Yeah, no, he's a situational guy or a, a rotational guy, I should say, which would be, which would be better. Yeah. So what else we got? There isn't much else really to, to discuss at this point, other than everything we've talked about here. We don't Lafleur. As far as the X's and O's, I will say, stay tuned to Cheese at TV. We've got a couple new writers. We've got a couple yep. of new guys that have come on staff. We're going to be doing more film, more draft uh, analysis, draft player pro- projections, mock drafts. Ross Ugham yep. will do his mock drafts. I think the War Room podcast at Packers Talk uh, Network is going to come back, and those guys will be there talking about the right. um, the draft. And, and if you're not players. following Dusty Evely, he just joined the Cheese at TV team. If you're not following him on Twitter, you should be. Uh, the guy does fantastic breakdowns of film. So there's going to be a lot of that, and and I would assume he's going to get into some um, some prospects as well. So yeah, um, yeah, he definitely will. There's going to be a lot of great content at Cheesehead TV uh, with with this. I mean, we already had guys. Uh, what Ross Uglum, I think, does some breakdown too. Yeah, right? Ross, Ross, Ross will be there doing so it. So well, we're going to other- have more to add to the pile. So there's going to be plenty of that, and I think people are hungry for that right now. Well, for those of you who haven't been uh, following or fans of the website the last couple of years, there's a team that puts together the annual Cheesehead TV draft guide. Yeah. And that is uh, one of the most Packers slanted draft guides that you can buy. And it'll be available electronically. It is a great, it's a great purchase. And it's, draft che- and it's cheap. I think it's, I think it's like nine five bucks. No, it's nine. It's like nine bucks. There's an early price, like an, an early, early buy price. I think they do like five. I shouldn't say that cause I'm kind of guessing, but there is an early price and then they, and then it goes up when it actually releases, it'll go up in price. So make sure you get in on that early. Cause they usually do a discounted version of that. And as far as the draft goes, because it's so like direct to the Packers, it's going to be full of lots of great content. The Packers fans are going to want to read. Not not like, you know, looking at every mock draft and every team's, you know, thing. You, you don't have to weed through that stuff. Cheesehead TV is like bringing it all to you in one clump. Here's a bunch of Packers-related uh, draft prospects. Get, you know, so you can get plugged in and educated for the draft that way. I think it's it's a fantastic buy because it's so dang cheap. And nobody nobody does anything like it. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Well, a couple of years ago, I contributed to it and broke down the safeties, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what'd you do? What did I do? Oh, the sirens. Um, I insulted Kyler Sackrell. Uh, Nick says he had 12 sacks this year. No. So, what did you do yesterday at lunch? What do you mean? Of course, it's the sirens. Like, what? What else would it be? I didn't hear the sirens when you asked. Okay, it just happened. You said, "What did you do?" And I'm this like, guy. "What did I do? Did I break the show?" I thought I broke the show. You probably did. I thought I broke the show. So, um, uh, no, hold on. So before, hold. <laughs> so before before we move on any any further. Really, truly, though, the uh, the draft guide, a lot of work goes into it. Uh, guys like Peter Bukowski and Jason Hirschhorn and uh, Zach Cruz are going to do some yep. guest spots for it. So definitely check that out. Get on there. Look for it. There will be a link for it. It will be easy. Uh, Cheesehead TV will be really easy to purchase. Uh, definitely highly recommend it. Yep. That's my spiel. So as far as the draft goes and, and players and stuff, I, I haven't done a, a whole lot of reading and research yet. Oh, I haven't either. This I, coaching I'm going to do thing some reading, right, over. exactly. But there is one player that I do want towards, towards the end of the first round, or maybe even in the second round, Noah Fant, the tight end from Iowa looks, I mean, that kid looks great. The receiving tight end um, is he's, he's very well built. And I, I, 
I'm very interested to see some tape on him and see some write-ups on him, but that's one guy that I'm keeping my eye on because they do need they need to get a young tight end. Even if Jimmy Graham's back at next year and he's awesome, tight ends usually aren't great in their first season anyways. They need they're gonna need to find a tight end a tight end in this draft. At yeah. least my opinion is they're gonna need to find one. And Tanya didn't look that great the last two games. We kinda no. hoped he'd be that guy, but I don't think he's there's a reason he's undrafted. So yeah. I don't think he's going to be that guy. He's a good rotational tight end, but he's not your end all be all. And so I think, I think that I am a big fan of F- Florida's Jacai polite. Yeah. And I hope that he'll still be there when the Packers pick. I think that he would be a really good add to the pass rush room. He's just, he plays yeah. violent Packers need to get more violent. I saw him mock to the Packers. I forget which website it was. One of the, one of the bigger ones, not just because I don't think Josh Allen is going to be there. And frankly, between the two, I think I'd rather have polite. Right. Okay, so one last thing I do want to say, Nick does. Nick said that that Kyler Fackrell had 12 sacks last year, which is which is great, and maybe with a premier pass rusher on the other side actually having consistent consistent success, he'd be even better. So maybe I'm wrong on Fackrell, but I don't. I would not go into next season believing that that's a good choice. So. Anyways, I think that's the show. You got you got anything else? No, I think that's it. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back again when there is something substantial to talk about. I don't right. have a specific date right. or time for you, but I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Again, if you're not following us, check out the bottom of the screen there. Follow the show. Follow Jeremy. Follow yep. me. We'll be doing some more giveaways. We will announce the next time we do a show. I mean, I don't know. Who else could get fired that would prompt <laughs> us to want to do a show? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what we didn't talk about was Vic Fangio going to the Broncos. That's a happy day. To, to, for the Bears to lose him after they had the season they had on defense and have to start over with a new defensive coordinator, yippee! Yeah, that's, could, I mean they, that, that's they, that's great. He's that's yeah, great. but they could find the next up and coming defensive coordinator. They could. They're they not going to. Okay, they're going to fail. Khalil Mack is going to is only getting better. So. You know what? Let me. I just hope they come into next season with Parky Fayo. <laughs> you know what? Let me remind Parky you. That's let me remind you of something very important. The Bears still suck. So no can matter what it, happens, can we get it one more time? The, do it one more time. Uh, one yeah, more time. The double doink. Yeah, do it. Do it. Pie de Cody Parkey, 43 yardas. El snap. Le mete el pie. Distancia, dirección. Le dio el poste. No, falló. Oh. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. No, señor. Los hijos se van con la victoria. Ay, papá. No, señor. No, señor. The Bears still suck. There you go. Okay, hold on real quick. That is the end of the show. We're going to cut out of here. Thank you so much for listening. The one thing I want to make sure to say is subscribe to the YouTube page because we will be back and there will be more content on the YouTube page. And if you enjoyed the show, please hit that like button. Share the show with your friends. If you get a chance, you know, you know some nerdy Packer fans who want to listen to Packer talk, share the show and follow us on uh, social media. And until next time, this is Cheesehead TV Live. Thank you for listening to Cheesehead TV Live. Check out CheeseheadTV.com for more great Packers content. <laughs>